Okay, I wanted to talk about roadmaps, how Lord of the Rings Return to Moria is learning from Valheim, how Valheim can kind of learn from its past, and also kind of from Minecraft, but it kind of in a what-not-to-do sort of way. And, of course, Minecraft can also learn from this in a way, and so that we have survival games that can have a good system of understanding with quality updates to come. Now, Valheim, the devs, they know that they don't want people constantly playing the game. You know, you don't have to do that. We can play other games, and I do want to play other games, so time scale is very limited in that sense. But even if things are every three months, which I doubt, but even if things are every six months, and I'm not talking major even, but just qualitative small bursts of good, good content. Mm, man, I think everybody will be happy. But first, before I get into the nitty gritty of what that might entail, let's talk Return to Moria's roadmap. All right, this is just very simple. It's just a couple of things. Patch one, update one, and then future stuff. Patch one, it's just come out. What does it entail? A lot of bug fixing. This is the reason why Valheim scrapped their initial roadmap. Well, they had a ton of bugs that they wanted to fix. And so it delayed, delayed, delayed everything. And they realized they couldn't deliver on their roadmap promises in time. And so they scrapped it. What did Return to Moria do? Well, first things first, fix the bugs. Good. They learned. They saw, and they learned. Very good. Make the experience smooth as possible. Great. Especially good for everybody's first runs. I have a first episode out. Haven't had a second yet. It's been over a week now. Why is that? I don't know. I wanted to give them time, fix the bugs, make everything more special. But also, because of Update 1. Update 1 will be also a bunch of quality of life situations. And experiential improvements to the final fight. Well... Boy, do I want my final fight to be improved in the experience. I don't even know what it is. Don't tell me. Don't spoil it. I'll ban you. I want it to be good. And so, I can wait. They've delivered on the update or the patch one. So I can, you know, I can hope that they will hopefully deliver for the boss. Final boss. And so I can wait. Well, they've also said that there's some feedback that they want to change with the wolves and all of that. And that's fine, too. So we move on to the final thing. 24, 2024 and beyond. They just say, we're going to be transparent. And we're going to move on from there. And that's good, because Valheim initially... Well, they didn't know what they were getting into with all the bugs. They didn't think that they were going to get as many people playing as they did. And they took a lot of time patching in bugs when they had uh, when they had promised the roadmap. The roadmap. Oh yes, the roadmap, which uh, has had a big outdated thing slapped on there by fans, and also all these check marks and X's and question marks and well, what do these mean? Well, over time. They've actually come to deliver on some of these things, which is cool. So, I think some devs, maybe you don't put a release date at all. But you do put out a bunch of these names and titles. And we do get things delivered. And that's cool. But I want to take a deeper look. And understand that saying, oh, have they delivered this, have they not isn't necessarily the end-all be-all on the quality of a development team. Even if all of the things delivered were a net positive, which I think they were. Hearth and Home was great. Cult of the Wolf, 
They don't want you calling the Frost Gibbs cult of the wolf, really. We didn't really get that. They say it's more like Puppy of the Wolf. That's what they could get out, and they wanted to move forward. So, not quite. Didn't really get this as much. Just fishing uh, changes from that, I believe it was. New biome. Voyage to the Mistlands. Oh boy, we got the Mistlands. Was it really cool? Was it really fun? Yeah, it's my new favorite biome. I actually really like the Mistlands. I find it a lot of fun. But they missed a lot of easy layups in some of these updates, especially in the Mistlands. We didn't get Dverger trading. Now we have these really cool Dverger NPCs that we can interact with, but we can't trade with them. We have to be mean to them. We have to pillage with them. Really? Are, are we sure about that? You sure we won't have some things that maybe we could trade for them? Some uh, quests that we could do? No, none of that. Easy layup. They missed it. Well, they have a giant cart. That looks like it's got a good size for a lox. You know, Dverger have uh, lox carts and lox carriages. Haldor and now Hildur do. Just We just knew about Haldor at the time. And he's a Dverger. Um, well, we see those large carts. We can't craft them. We can't have any lox carts. Nope. No lox carts. Alright. Well, that's an easy layup that was missed. What a shame. And so on and so on. So, I can mention as well the Dverger dock pieces. We have Dverger docks. Where, where, where are the Dverger boats? Do we have a new boat that fits with the docks? No. Not even a little shipwreck to imply. No, none of that. No. Uh, can we build the dock pieces? No, we can't. How long did it take for us to get the Dverger door, even? Uh, months. Months to get the door. So, yeah, it, it, even though it was a net positive inclusion, net positive update, there were some easy layups that was missed. In the Frost Caves, of course, Frost Caves, of course, there's going to be things missed because it it's not technically Cult of the Wolf to them, and they planned on it being Cult of the Wolf. So of course there are going to be easy layups missed there. There's a lot of opportunity for additional crystal gear. Eh, we didn't get that. We got more crystal. And we can use that crystal for Dragger Lanterns. I love Dragger Lanterns. No crystal gear. We still got Stone Cutter that we can't really do much of it all at. So, hmm, kind of a missed opportunity. A lot of easy layups that leave a lot of gaps in the gameplay where yes it's still a net positive but it is also a net positive to just play the game at early access launch that was an amazing experience I spent 320 hours playing with my friends on our first ever playthrough and it was fantastic it was absolutely phenomenal even when it was filled with bugs here's me as a log. My friend saw my name running over the cliff and then he saw a log with my name tag on it running over the cliff. It was fucking hilarious. And then there was a drake and I sniped it and the arrow became the log and then the log hit the drake. And you see we're in bronze gear, we're in black forest gear. We died a lot. One of my friends when he died, he didn't really respawn right. He started possessing other players and appearing naked, uh, invisible to us, but very visible to him, right above our players stuck to them like glue. And then he was stuck to a drake like glue. And boy, that was hilarious. But all of this being said, having all the time between updates that we do, I expect there to be a lot of easy layups not missed like what we do have with some of our updates do you know what my favorite valheim update has been so far the root update thanksgiving thanksgiving 2021 the root update by far and i'll get to why in a moment but i just want to i just want to show you this patch one 
Oh, look at this. Patch. Patch 1.02. 120 individual fixes. And they made some balance changes, some things. They're referencing certain enemies and such that I haven't seen. I'll link this in the description so that you guys can watch. But hey, very recently, balance patch. Whole bunch of stuff, bugs, fixes, but also changes in terms of enemy balance and what have you. Uh, also, just like the amount of HP when you revive a friend has been changed. The amount of HP that you restore from certain food has been changed, etc, etc. I don't want to spoil or reveal anything uh, too advanced because I'm taking my time. Because I know that they can deliver all of these shenanigans in good time. Now let's talk more about this root update, because I think that this is the key going forward for all of these sort of survival games when they have a main system in place and they have their experience making big updates, that they can make these little supplementary updates to keep everybody happy. The root update, Thanksgiving 2021, included these abominations. They felt like there was something missing in the swamps, a mini-boss type of enemy, kind of like the troll, pseudo mini-boss, right? Really scary type of creature. Well, Iron Gate are really good at hiding mobs, letting them blend in with the environment unless you have a really keen eye for them. The Black Forest has a lot of blue lighting. You might miss a troll when you're running through, and then you see it in the distance as it moves really impactful, really amazing moment. I remember pitch black, nighttime, black forest, coming back, first ever playthrough on a side world, coming back with some bronze, it's storming at nighttime, lightning strikes, I'm just in the meadows, I think I'm safe, the lightning illuminates a troll. Now I'm fighting a troll. It's a beautiful moment, and they have perfectly implemented that with the A-bomb here. You see it, or not, and it comes out of the ground all slow, people screaming, what the fuck, what is that thing? Scared as hell. It's fun to fight. It drops really, really good drops, and they've tweaked it over time. They tweaked it, they made it more difficult because you can cheese it on top of a crypt, you can cheese it with the Surdling geysers. You can snipe at it from a distance, although it might take a while if you have low bow levels, but you can use fire arrows to kill it. You can at least bring it to half health before swapping the axe and shield or sword and shield and take it out the rest of the way there. It's a lovely, lovely time to fight, even when it's been buffed up, even though we're fighting in the swamps, which is a pretty big difficulty spike from the Black Forest. And what does it drop? Well, it used to just drop roots and sometimes an abomination trophy the abomination trophy was pretty aesthetic but then they added guck to its loot table and now guck is no longer a limited resource now we can get it all the time we just have to hunt a bombs oh so now we have three bonus aesthetic tools in the abomination trophy and in the guck, which you can get standing green iron torches and green banners from. You can use that guck to also make the Draugr Fang, which is a nice DPS and DOT arrow efficient bow. Pretty nice in the mountains, in the plains. You can also make the root set, which is absolutely game changing mechanics wise. Again, incredible. Poison res, not as strong as the potion, but it does the job, and it is fantastic to have. You can just free up that inventory slot of the poison res pots, wear the mask. Root harness, pierce resistance, phenomenal chest piece, amazing value, all the way up even into the mistlands, amazing use. The leggings, it completes the set, what does the set do? Plus 15 bows. Oh, incredible. That increases the speed at which you are firing, basically decreasing draw time for the bow. And of course it makes your arrows hit harder. That's amazing. 
It does make you weak to fire, though. Well, what's the biggest threat of fire? Falling shamans. What's a really good way to take out falling shamans? Bow. What buffs bow? What stimulates bow usage? Incentivizes great archery? The root set. It covers for its own weaknesses in the strength that it incentivizes. And that pierce res is phenomenal. It's got great passives and it buffs really good actives. Covers your weaknesses. Phenomenal design overall. Phenomenal design. So mechanically, they released one mob. They fiddled around with it a little bit here and there. And it makes a huge difference for biomes and biomes. It utterly changes the game. And changes the way that you would progress through. It's that good. But then they added in Mistlands, the Arbalest. The king of burst damage and stealth burst damage. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Really good. You gotta level it up, which can be a pain. But you can just go to the swamps, find a spawner, destroy all the body piles, leave the evil bone pile there, and just snipe the skeletons as they spawn. Absolutely set up a, with the hoe, a, uh, earthen mound raising ground around the evil bone pile so that you don't actually accidentally destroy it the skeletons still spawn and you can get bones to make your bone bolts again it's incredible all at the same time you're gonna get feathers from chickens which you're farming anyway so it's all renewable it's amazing it's an amazing setup and you can get your arbalest levels up high once you get your arbalest levels up high you can get a sneak one-shot with a carapace bolt with a quality 2 arbalest. We can get a quality 3 arbalest now, but you can one-shot it with a quality 2 arbalest. One-shot what? One-shot a y'all. 1500 HP. You get a sneak attack, yeah, sneak attack uh, weak spot carapace bolt with some good, good arbalest levels. And you can one-shot it. You can one-shot it. That is some absurd burst damage. You can just drop Seekers from range, if you can see them. But you know what we will be able to see more often? Ashlands mobs. We know from the terrain teasers that we'll be able to see far. And seeing far, we'll be able to dominate with the Arbalest. And the Arbalest is made from roots. Which is all thanks to this Thanksgiving update. As simple as it may be, this one update... What else does it have? Well, the A-Bomb Trophy is used to make sticky fishing bait. What do you get with sticky fish bait? Giant herring. This is a bad image, because it doesn't show off how cute these whiskers are. This is another cool decoration. So we have something that gives you a source for three really good mechanical options. The Root Set, Draugr Fang, Arbalest. It also gives you access to four really cool aesthetic options. The Standing Iron Torch, the Green Banners, the Abomination Trophies themselves, and the Giant Heron. Take a look at this. This is what I made in my recent playthrough. Look at me. Got my root harness on. Looks great. It's fantastic. Great swap for your Skeetos, Seekers, what have you. Falling, falling Spear Throwers. And I can very easily swap the full Fenris to get fire resistance on shamans if I want to. I can snipe them. Or I can swap. I have the option. Check out the A-Bomb trophies, looking great. Green banners here. And I have standing green torches in my storage area to make all the good signs on my chest areas look amazing. I'm using every single aspect of this one mob drops except for the giant heron because I don't have him and I also skipped the Draugr Fang but it is good I'm just skipping it arbitrarily so we have meaningful mechanical options three of them really cool aesthetic options four of them 
Some of the stuff was tweaked in later, and we know that Iron Gate can make these little updates at the same time as their major updates because what did they say about Hilda's request? Hey, we make this at the same time as Ashlands. It will not slow down the Ashlands development time. That's what they said. Surely, they can fill in gaps of tears here and there. Oh, there's no, there's no mountain tier at gear? Oh, there's no plains tier sledge? What if we add in this mob and it has these drops and then it gives you those recipes for aesthetic options and these meaningful mechanical options and it changes the whole playthrough. And we release an update like this every, say, three or every six months. A, it would automatically be better than a lot of these modern Minecraft options and mob votes and what have you. But B, it is an amazing example of something that can absolutely be a whole little bit at first glance that leads to a whole lot of enjoyment for everybody. Because how often have you seen in the Valheim community people recommend this root harness or the, say the root set is so good or talk about abominations and how to, this is how you deal with abominations in the swamps and ah, it's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. It's so simple, but the formula is right there. Now, one of the devs, one of the devs at Iron Gate, they've said, okay, we're not going to fill in the tiers. We want some of the tiers to be empty. We want certain options in some of the tiers to not be there. Why is that? Eh, we Bullshit reasons. If I tell you the reasons, you're not going to be happy. It's nonsense reasons. But it's only one of the devs that said that. All of the devs have their own opinions about how things should work. That same dev that said we're, we don't want to fill in the tiers, he also wants to make the game very easy. There's another dev that wants to make the game even harder. Conflicting opinions. Compromise is reached. This is why portals work the way that they do in Valheim, because of compromise. Some devs didn't want any portals. Some devs wanted you to have portals and be able to portal everything. Compromise. And now we have custom game modes where we can set up our world modifiers to a variety of different things including portal everything or no portals now i think it's very very possible that we could have updates like this that fill in gaps that they said that they wouldn't fill in why is that they said they wouldn't include new npcs with quest lines what did we just get? Hilder's request. An NPC with a quest line. Clearly some minds were changed at Iron Gate. And we got a we got a nice update for it. Is the update perfect? No. What does the update have? Mini bosses. They drop a trophy. They drop stuff for Hilder's quest. They could drop something else. They could drop unique materials that we could use to craft some mechanical options and some aesthetic options. Wow. The setup is right there. They missed the easy layup for nonsense reasons. Again, if I say the reasons, you will not be happy with the team. You won't. But they can change their mind and I hope that if this has positive reception, three mechanical options, four aesthetic options, one new mob. Boom. Every three or six months. I'm giving it pause and impact because it sounds simple, and yet it's so, so good. The root update is phenomenal, and they keep adding to it. They keep making it better the more that they introduced Arbalest, Giant Heron. They keep making it more impactful as the updates go. Let me know what you guys think. I this, this video is way longer than it should be, but I hope you guys understand that it's like... 
Mm, too many missed layups. Too many missed easy decisions that could have made the game so much better. And a lot of faith can be restored with the community. And a lot of people would really praise the update schedule. If any sort of survival game had this sort of release date schedule. I'm sure people are going to say, oh, these games have it, these games have it. I wish all of them had it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys some other day. Bye!